questions about how I do my happy patchwork blankets. So I thought I'd just talk you through how I do mine. So I use the Martine Makes knitted patchwork recipe, I believe it's called, and I'll link that below. For this particular blanket, I use 56 stitches. So I do pick up 28 here and 28 along here. I've had a lot of questions about how to continue the blanket once you've got two or four squares. Um, for this blanket, because all of the, I'm going to call these spines, are going the same way. The way I do it is I will pick up 28 here and 28 here. And you always know that where you're, so you pick up 28, place a stitch marker, pick up 28. So you always know where your stitch marker is. Draw a diagonal line and that will be your spine. So for instance, if I cast on here, so I'd pick up 28 stitches, place a stitch marker, and then I would cast on 28 stitches. And I would do that using the backwards loop method. Your stitch marker will be here. So a diagonal line from this point would be here, which would give you a V. And you can make this into a blanket with a cross in the center so that your spines will be making an X or a cross. And I'll show you that a bit later on another blanket. Um, do I need to tell you anything else? I'm not weaving in my ends on the back of this one. I shall tie them off very securely possibly a little dab of fray check and I'm going to line this or back this rather and I'm going to do an eye cord edging and perhaps when I get to that part I will um, share that process with you as well. So I'm going to cast on for my next square which is going to be this colour. So my next square is going to go here so I'm going to be picking up 28 stitches, placing a stitch marker and then picking up 28 stitches again. I start right in the join between the two colours. So you see this little row of pearl bumps down here. I go to the top of that and I put my needle under the two loops there and that is my first stitch. And then I'll go into every gap between the pearl bumps first one's a bit tricky but you'll find it and I just go into them and I knit the stitch so you put your needle through and you can see two bars on the top of the needle do that all the way along I'm sitting at a strange angle so I hope you're seeing this okay This is my fourth Happy Patchwork blanket. I made a huge one, more of a scrappy one first, which I'll show you because that has the cross on it. And then I made two, I think two baby blankets, which was kind of like a checkerboard. The first one was alternate cream with random pretty colours and the next one was the same but I used a lovely beigey colour which I called baby bunny. <laughs> okay. So at this point it looks like I've got one more stitch to pick up here so I'm going to count and make sure at this point I've got 27. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27. Occasionally you may find that you need to pick up an extra stitch or you may need to leave picking up a stitch. You may have too many and that would depend on your accuracy when you're doing your decreases on the square previous. 
so I just need to pick up this corner one. So how I do that is I find the last garter ridge of the colour below and I go in and I pick up the top loop and I go under. So I'm picking up three strands. I've got this loop here and these two loops that are underneath. And that makes a really neat corner. So pick up that one, place the stitch marker. These are the brilliant floops that we have in the shop at the moment. I love them, they're so great. I'm using them for a hat at the moment. They're so cute and I colour coordinate them too. So going up here now, first one is the very first two loops. So you find the pearl bumps of this square that you're joining to and you pick up the first two loops and this may be a bit loose because this is where your um, end of yarn is. So you pick up that one first and then we do exactly the same. Pull it nice and snug just on those centre stitches and then you go in every gap between the garter ridges and you know you're doing it right according to my, my way of doing it when you go in and you have two strands on the top. So we need to pick up another 28 stitches up here. You want to pick up the stitches fairly snugly, but not not tight, but just you don't want it all loosey goosey because then you don't get such a neat um, join between the squares. So I'm going to get to about this point and then I'm going to count my stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, 26. So I need to pick up two more, which is exactly the space I've got. So this one's a bit tricky, but just pull your knitting and you'll see the gap. And then the very last one, there's two loops here, if you can see one two and I put my needle under both of those little loops and that's my last stitch there we go so that's all the stitches picked up and we know we've done this right because if you draw a line up from the stitch marker you'll see that the vein is going the same way as all of the others Okay, for our first row is a row on the reverse. So on the wrong side of your knitting, get rid of all my ends everywhere. It's not the neatest way to make a blanket, having all the ends everywhere, but I find it easier if I know I'm going to put backing on. So this is my row repeat. So for the wrong side row, let me tidy these up a bit. Slip the first stitch with yarn in back and then knit all the way to the centre. Slip the stitch marker and knit all the way to the last stitch. Okay, 
Your last stitch will have got a little bit loose by this point, so just tighten up the, the yarn end. And then we knit through the back loop of that last stitch. So that's one row, that's the wrong side row. For the right side row, do exactly the same start as for the wrong side row. So you slip the first stitch with the yarn in the back and now you knit two stitches before the stitch marker. I'd like to stress that this is only how I do it and there are lots of ways to do these blankets and I'm sure everyone who does them has their own technique. Um, but this is the one, or this is kind of how I've developed my technique and it does give a really neat finish. But this is by no means the right way or the only right way. <laughs> There we go, two stitches before the stitch marker and we knit these two stitches together, slip the stitch marker and then we knit the next two stitches through the back loop together. And then we carry on to the last stitch. I'll put my written instructions to the basic rows in the description box below. And then for the last stitch, just as you did for the wrong side row, we just knit through the back loop. And there we go, that's the two row repeat. And we're off onto our next square nicely now. I've only got the rest of this row to do and then I'm going to be doing a row of kind of neutrals and light speckles and this will be done and I'm so excited. So this is my other blanket, this is the first one I made and this one the spines have formed across and kind of arrows like this. Um, that took a little bit more brain power, but it was my very first blanket. As long as you remember that wherever your stitch marker is, so you may have picked up, let's say 28, I think this was a different count, but let's say you picked up 28, placed your stitch marker, and you may have cast on 28 here, because this one wouldn't have been here, I don't think. <laughs> um, as long as you remember where your stitch marker is, you draw a diagonal line upwards that's where your spine will be so let's say I had these four here and this one over here I would want the spine to go the opposite to this to form the cross so what I would have done here is picked up 28 stitch marker here because if you draw a line diagonally upwards that's where the vein goes and I'd have picked up 28 along here so I hope that helps. Um, I love making these blankets so much and I will certainly be making more. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that and it was helpful.